able to implement a UNET uh, model. Um, so yeah, UNET are, are basically used uh, extensively everywhere. Um, but in that video, we are really are going to focus on UNET for diffusion models. Uh, so basically, they have some sp uh, specificity. For example, they take the uh, time step as a context. Um, so yeah, we are really going to focus on UNET for uh, diffusion models, but you might adapt the architecture for the usage. Uh, and at some point, I, I will add uh, an impl uh, in, the, in that channel, we'll add an implementation from scratch of the initial paper uh, that uh, introduced the UNET. So if you're interested, subscribe. Um, but yeah, let's dive into that. Uh, again, we're going to focus on a uh, UNET that can be used as, ba as backbones for different models. Uh, and specifically, we're going to implement the architecture that was used in the uh, DDPM paper, so denoising different proactive models. Uh, and actually, my next video, uh, so in two weeks, will be uh, about implementing the DDPM paper. So if you're interested in two different models, into a generative AI, uh, subscribe for uh, for more content related to, uh, to AI on different models. Um, yeah, that being said, let's dive in. Uh, we're going to use PyTorch to implement this model. Um, and we can start by uh, creating a function that will embed our time step t to some uh, higher or uh, higher dimensional data. So basically, that's a pretty that's been really common in machine learning in the past. Uh, you received your inputs, but they were low dimensional, and you were uh, you were expanding them. Uh, you were using a function to map them to a higher dimensional space before uh, treating them with the uh, machine learning. Um, yeah, because that, that in some uh, in some application it helps a lot. Uh, we know that, uh, for example, for roof this is critical. Um, on here, for example, we are using time step embedding. Basically, this is uh, very similar to position encoding in roof or position encoding in um, uh, in uh, transformers. Uh, so basically, we receive a time step t. So uh, in division model, this is just number between zero and one thousand. This is an integer, or uh, we uh, map that to some uh, to, to some dimensions uh, that we can choose as input. Uh, on that will uh, will help the neural network to learn uh, on to to use this uh, information. Uh, on yeah, when we are using a specific architecture that is, that's basically based on convolutions, so we'll see later how to use that information uh, to, uh, to to condition the uh, convolution. Uh, on you might be interested into that for a lot of applications. Uh, I don't know. Let's say you want to do e uh, image to image, or you want to condition that on some uh, specific. Uh, uh, numbers, uh, let's say for example uh, a sequence of floats or of integers, then you can use that kind of embedding, uh, and then we, you will see later or we use the which mechanism we use to uh, to condition the, uh, the 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 unit or at least uh, each ResNet block uh, from from those inputs. But okay, let's uh, move on. Uh, another uh, another critical point of the unit is the uh, a done sample block. So to done sample the spatial. Uh, resolution of feature maps, for example. Um, the done sampling can be done very easily. You don't need any uh, specific uh, done sampling uh, algorithm or blocks. You can directly use a convolution, a 2D convolution and set the number of strides to two so that it will uh, reduce the spatial dimension by two. Uh, yeah, so very easy. You just need to uh, create a convolution in your uh, constructor and then in your forward path, you can just uh, uh, feed the input x to the convolution. Now that we've done sampling uh, block, we can uh, do the opposite, implement the upsampling block. Here we cannot just implement upsampling by uh, using a convolution, so we need to use uh, another block to do the upsampling and to expand the spatial resolution by a factor of two. Um, so yeah, first we just implement the convolution so that this block has run parameters and will not just do the upsampling but will also do some uh, uh, computation. Um, so yeah, we'll use a, we will uh, apply convolution that will not change the number of channels. We go from C channels to C channel. Uh, we use a kernel size of three. Um, but in the forward function, so we will use the interpolate function, and we use the nearest neighbor uh, interpolation to uh, expand the, the spatial resolution. And once we've done that, we can apply a convolution uh, to uh, yeah to 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 to, to learn so something. Uh, on, on to make some uh, computations. Uh, then we can implement the network in network uh, block. So basically, this can really be seen as a one by one convolution, and it could also be implemented uh, 
ju just very easily as a one by one conversion. Um, uh, my uh, last video was about uh, the, the paper that introduced networking network. So if you're interested into that, uh, I recommend that you have a look at uh, my la latest video. Um, but yeah, so very, uh, we just implement the weight on the bias based on the input. Uh, basically, the input dimension is the input number of channel. The output dimension is the output number of channel. Uh, and uh, we, we initialize the weight on the bias. And then we uh, apply this uh, function. So basically, it's for each pixel, it's as if we were applying a MLP to each pixel. Um, yeah, and basically for each pixel, the input to the MLP are its uh, its, its channels, uh, and we go from uh, a given number of channels to another number of channels. So this is the implementation, basically just following the equations from the network in network paper, but that could be implemented uh, as well just by one by one conversion. Uh, from my experiments, I've seen that one by one conversions from my torch are a bit more efficient than this implementation, uh, but. People tend to say that this is uh, more optimal, so I will need to make more or uh, to draw of analysis with tensor entry, for example. Uh, but for now, uh, by just compiling this function and comparing it to a uh, one by one conversion from PyTorch, PyTorch was more efficient. Uh, but that's maybe expected because they've uh, optimized yeah, very deeply this function with a C C++ backend. Uh, while when I, I am compiling this function, maybe I'm not. Uh, my the, the, the optimization is not as optimal. So maybe if we write that as a CUDA, custom CUDA kernel, it might be more efficient than the uh, one by one conversion. But again, this is doing exactly the same operation. Uh, if you use the same weight or the same bias for both operations, you will get the exact same result. But okay, moving on, on at least, and you, you will see this NIN block in a lot of uh, division model implementation, or at least UNET backbone. So I think that's great that you see it. Uh, we can move on now to create the, the ResNet block. So basically, uh, yeah, a standard ResNet block. We are going to use two convolutions. Uh, if the um, if we need to, so uh, if, if there are some modifications of uh, if the number of input channels not the same as the number of output channel, we are also going to add a one by one convolution or a network in network. Uh, you will understand why in a moment. Uh, and we will also use to part uh, as you can see in the argument from the constructor. And we're also going to use some linearities and we're going to use the CU. So let's move on to implementing a different function. So first we're going to, to apply group normalization and then the linearity and then the convolution. Uh, we're going to do the same to so for the first time and then the second time. Uh, and you can see that in between we're going to use the uh, time step t, so the embedding of the time step t. Uh, because yeah, for division model we're using for the same network for each time step t but we want the network to behave differently for each time step t, so we uh, condition it on the time step. And basically, uh, we take the embedding of the time step, we apply a non-linearity to it, and then we use a neural network, so that's why we have a dense layer in this const constructor uh, to uh, map that to the uh, desired number of uh, for output channel, because the uh, in that case, the input time embedding uh, dimension is 512, uh, so therefore, yeah, we use this uh, dense uh, MLP. First, that makes uh, the network more flexible because that adds more parameters, but that also uh, allows to make sure that the, uh, the, the dimension match. And finally, uh, if the because it's a, a ResNet, so at the very end, we will add X to the hidden features that have been computed. So we will return X plus H. So if the uh, number of channel of X is not the same as the number of channel of H, we're going to use a network in network or, or, or again a one by one conversion to uh, expand the number of channel of x or reduce it um, so that it's the same as h and then we can return uh, x plus h okay so we're almost done now we can uh, move on to implementing uh, attention blocks um, so because this paper is uh, is working on low resolution images uh, at least the initial ddpm paper was not working at a Basically, it was not LDN. Um, it was operating directly in uh, pixel space on low resolution images. Uh, so basically, we could apply uh, attention block almost everywhere in the network. But usually, what is done is we just apply attention block in the uh, middle block uh, because there the resolution is the lowest. Uh, and here, we're just going to do a self attention. So basically, we can implement the Q, K, and V uh, layers. 
so to compute the key query or values from the input while we're going to use network in network to compute those uh, values uh, and we can also uh, yeah, store the number of channel on a uh, create a last uh, network in network uh, block and you will see in a moment uh, how it is used so yeah we, we compute some hidden features by using code normalization and then compute the key query and values uh, using the, uh, the the matrices the run matrices from attention uh, then we're going to compute the weights of the uh, attention operation and then we can uh, apply the attention operation uh, by uh, yeah, using the weights on the uh, query key uh, on well the, the the values we've already computed the weight the weights from the key on keys and then uh, we can use the weights to compute a weighted uh, sum uh, of well the normalized weight so the sum to one we can compute the the, norm, uh, the weighted sum of the values to get the hidden features and then at the very end we apply a last one by one convolution to get the last uh, output and uh, yeah we can return x plus h here again we, we use uh, some skip connections and now we're almost done we can put all our pieces together so uh, we can see that we had a few uh, a few extra uh, extra uh, layers to our unit instead of just the building blocks we've built um, so yeah, basically the uh, okay maybe i will explain that later when we use them in the forward pass um, so now we can start by implementing the, do, the don sampling blocks so using uh, all our uh, all, all our uh, building blocks you see it's usually resnet down sample uh, usually two resnet down sample two resnet down sample and sometimes we have some attention in between uh, again because they were uh, operating directly on low resolution images we, we can afford to put attention layers in the uh, directly into done sampling layers but if we were working with higher resolution images we will need to just uh, uh, for computational uh, reasons we will need uh, to remove that and only apply the attention to, uh, to the middle block um, <coughs> yeah because again the attention is a qu quadratic mechanism uh, I, I think i will make some videos about attention later so subscribe if you're interested into that then we can implement the, the middle block and then the upsample block uh, again using combination of ResNet, upsample or uh, attention blocks. And then once we have all that, we can implement the fraud function. Uh, there is also a final convolution that will uh, map the, uh, hidden the, the, the hidden features with a given number of channel to three because we are, uh, we are generating our RGB data. Uh, oh yeah, let's move on with the fraud function, receive X. A, 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 a batch of images also receive t it's uh, uh, the time step t so it's just a source of uh, integers um, in our case we implement t as an integer from 0 to 9, uh, 9, 99 uh, in some other implementation uh, t is implemented uh, as a continuous value going from 0 to 1 for example in a, a stochastic uh, uh, differential equations or, or rectified flows for example but in uh, papers like DDPM uh, or, or discrete diffusion models, a T go for, is discrete and goes from 0 to 99. Okay, so the first thing to do is to embed it, uh, the, the, the T to, to some uh, embedding. And then we don't stop there. We do some uh, more uh, computations, again, to make the neural network more flexible or uh, to help it to, to get uh, a more like a, uh, yeah, a more flexible representation of, of the T uh, embedded. So we use the, the layer of created before linear one, linear, linear two, to, to get a, a, an embedding whose shape is 512. Uh, because I think the initial, when we just apply the uh, uh, get time step embedding by using uh, self.ch. Okay, so let's say we're using, for example, uh, Basically, what you can see is here we have self.ch on at the very end after we apply all those layers we have self.ch times four, so basically we've expanded the number of channels by four by using those layers. Then we can uh, process x by uh, using this uh, convolution one, so we make a first convolution, so that we map the number of channel to the number of channel we want for the done sample block, we said which is ch. So for example, we go from three channel if I will put this three channel uh, to uh, ch. Uh, and then we can uh, feed x1 to our done sampling uh, layers so you can see that this implementation is uh, not very elegant uh, i'm just uh, 
feeding the input from one layer to the other, it's because uh, first each uh, layer does not uh, take T embedding, T, uh, T embedding as input, uh, and also I will need to reuse some of those uh, those values later on for the upsampling up block. There are better ways to implement that, uh, more generic with a for loop, uh, but uh, on with by uh, app, app the, uh, uh, doing done sampling, you append those values in a, in a list. On doing uh, up sampling, you pop them little by little, uh, or you feed them to the uh, uh, to, to the ResNet when it's needed. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to make this uh, this implementation uh, very easy to understand. But uh, for more generic generic implementation, there are better ways to do that. Yeah, and here you can uh, we can do the up sampling. So because this uh, unit. Uh, at some point, we do the concatenation of the. Uh, we do some kind of skip connections where we take the. Uh, we reuse values from the done sampling block, so that's why I think this implementation is neat and very easy to understand, which is the purpose of this YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, if you want to put some code in production, that's not the best way to do. And then you can finally add uh, apply the final convolution. Before that, you can apply group normalization on uh, an activation function, uh, or you can return X. Um, depending on your application, you might try to add a final uh, activation function there, for example, a sigmoid. Uh, in our case, uh, for different model, we don't want that. Um, so yeah, so that's, really, that's, it, that's it for our unit uh, implementation. I hope you found that useful. Uh, download the code and uh, uh, play with that. Uh, for the context, it's coming from my course about division model. So if you're interested to get more details about that, uh, do not hesitate to, to, to have a look at my course uh, on next week we are going to implement to use this uh, this as the backbone uh, for implementing uh, the DPM so if you're interested uh, subscribe and thank you for everything for this video and leave the thumbs up if it was helpful to you thank you